Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by Airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at Airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. This is Ed in San Diego, and you're on Global TV Talk Show. This is a business unit of globalbusinessnews.net. And our special guest today is Tony Andell, who's a relocation professional. Let's say hi to Tony. Hi. Hello, Ed. How's it going? Thanks for being on the show. So tell us, what is your primary function these days? Well, my primary function is uh, right now I'm really working with a lot of international travelers that are coming into and out of um, the States. It's been a little bit of a challenge getting those visas, but we're working on it and it's going on. Uh, I've been working with actually a couple of the universities on helping their students come in, uh, their teachers, professors, uh, finding housing and everything. So that's one of the big things that I've been doing right now. And also uh, working with some um, different uh, carriers on helping locate homes for people that have been displaced. So those are a couple of my big focuses right now. So that's an insurance housing thing. Yes, that's for insurance, right? I'm doing that. And then of course, you know, I'm, I'm helping the uh, individuals uh, relocate into and out of the U.S. So on the insurance housing, uh, catastrophes such as the fires or the floods, mm -hmm. just terrible things going on. God, you must it's be ter busy. It's terrible, and it's been busy. And, and I'm working right now, working with not just, you know, for the insur the people that have been displaced. I'm working with um, the catastrophe teams that go in and out and the, um, you know, the agents and the response teams and the different different people that are going out to, you know, to the disaster areas um, and being deployed. So they need places to stay. So we're, you know, we're kind of sitting back right now and seeing how long the stays are going to be um, in the New Orleans area. And, you know, obviously we're all watching Tahoe and, you know, the fires that have been in, in California have just been, all the West Coast have just been amazing and just scary as heck. So we've been watching that and working with people on that too. Yeah, so there's not, thankfully, there's not much here in San Diego yet. Um, how about Let's in Ventura? Yeah, how no, about Ven Ventura? No, Ventura's fine. We had, our, we had our share over the last few years between the Thomas fire and the Woosley fire. You know, um, it, it's been, it was crazy here those couple of years with the fires. And, you know, I, I had a cousin that lost his home, which was horrible. Oh, it, wow. it, it's such a, it's such an emotional, emotional time. And um, it, it's, but I will say, watching community come together and the retailers and everybody coming together to help and people that don't know each other. It uh, kind of renewed your life and human your, uh, your, your humanity uh, belief in everybody, you know, just how wonderful people really are. So that's really nice to know. That's a great story for now. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so who pays you? Who paid I mean, me? Yeah, I mean, like, how do you get uh, doing that work? I mean, it's a good work, but but right. You know, but I'm, I'm I'm working with temporary housing companies. I, um, I actually have my I actually have my real estate license, so the great thing has been also, um, you know, working with trying to find some furnished rentals through my connections in that way as well. So you know, uh, I, I'm kind of I'm networking with the temporary housing companies, with the real estate, you know, 
all of those things. It's how I'm getting paid right now. But I also have been getting paid by companies have that brought me in to kind of help them with consulting. I mean, I've been consulting uh, for other companies on helping them strategically plan their insurance housing program, as well as some of their startups for temporary in the, in the temporary housing industry. That's Actually, ex- temporary excellent. accommodations, let's just say, because it's, you know, just not, just not apartments anymore. It's the, the whole caboodle. Yeah. So what does that mean? The whole caboodle? Could it be a hotel room? Could be a house? Could be a, what, a motor home or what? I've done it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have how ho- I've housed people in a hotel. I've helped set up hotels, homes, motor home, mo- mobile homes, um, RVs, things like that. We have even, um, you know, located commercial space. We've done that for buildings that, you know, we're, uh, companies come and say, hey, we need commercial space. We need to set up offices, things like that. So I really have done a little bit of everything, um, you know, turned a, knocked on a lot of doors. I, I remember at one point in um, my career, there was nothing. I think it was down in uh, Pensacola or Florida. There was no housing at all to be found. And we actually rented at a brand new um, being built assisted living, senior living community. They just said, you know what, we'll, we'll hold off opening our doors and you guys can have a big block of these apartments. So you have to be very creative when you're trying to find housing. I mean, you just can't do the old, you know, apartments every day. So you have to be creative. Good for you. This is really, uh, I've never heard this kind of story. So this is a uh, first for us on global TV. So um, <laughs> w- would you call this a relocation story? Probably. Well, yeah. No, definitely relocation because I mean, it's relocation and definitely temporary assignments at the same time. Um, first of all, you're relocating families. I mean, that's, that's huge. You're bringing people out for their temporary assignments when people are deployed. I'm definitely doing that. Helping some companies again, you know, when their people relocate, helping them with just some of the, the getting used to the city, getting to understand, finding homes, things like that. So it's kind of everything mixed together. Uh, relocation, definitely temporary assignments, you know, and then again, for the student housing, what the students are, these, these are kids that are just coming over for, um, you know, ESL, in, in English language, um, continuing education. So they're not here forever. They're here for, you know, six months, three months, different type, different time periods. So we're yeah. doing that. So COVID's impacted everything and everyone, uh, in addition to these other disasters. How has COVID impacted what you've just been describing to me? Oh my, COVID has has made the the uh, market extremely competitive in trying to get inventory. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, in years, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen the competition. You know, just you know, there, there's one apartment for three hundred thirty people, and so we're all kind of trying to go after the same apartment. So right now, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm trying to bring in probably I've got about 50 students I'm trying to place and there's no there's barely any apartments at all in Irvine I mean Irvine is I think the ratio I think somebody told me the um the vacancy factor is about four percent so you know the students that I'm talking to them all hours of the day and night and thank goodness for WhatsApp and we are communicating just trying to you know fit them into the right spot and get them situated and these kids are starting school yeah, it's September 15th. So it's been a very interesting experience. A lot of a lot of moving parts, trying to find the right solution for them. So the, the inventory has just been crazy. It's been um, a huge impact on us because the rates keep going up on us. So what about the vaccine situation? Is this an issue or is everybody vaxxed? The people that are coming over have to be vaccinated and right. um, they have to quarantine when they come in. So it's it's a 14 day quarantine. So a lot of them, again, they're trying to get over soon so that they can quarantine before school starts. So yes, we are. And then the, I think the other, the, bit, the challenge we're also having is getting the visas fast enough because, you know, the doors open and said, you can come on over to school, you can come, come here. And now everybody's, you know, rambling all the, the students and um, some of the, the faculty that are, you know, relocating, they're trying to get their visas all of a sudden. So that's been a challenge. I mean, the, the wait for visas is, is taking longer. So, and of course, that's a big impact on relocation as well. I mean, it's not, you know, it's relocation, it's students, it's, it's everybody trying to get their um, visas. 
so uh, having an immigration uh, attorney doesn't, uh, I mean, it helps, but it doesn't matter because it's all government stuff, right? Oh, it's, yeah, it's the government stuff. I mean, it's trying to get in. I mean, getting in and getting the appointments. Like one of the one of the people that I was speaking to the other day, they, you know, their appointments on September 10th and they won't know till September 17th and they have to be here by the 25th. So, you know, it makes it challenging is because the inventory, there's not, I, there's not a lot of inventory sitting out there where we can say, don't worry, just wait, come when you can. Now it's like, uh, you need to secure something right away but nobody's going to secure something if they don't have their visa. So it's, it's a lot of juggling act and we're all calling each other going, okay, where can you hold an apartment for us? So, you know, we won't know till the 17th on the visa. So it's been a very big challenge because it's such short notice. And I, and I think all the relocation departments are dealing with that. I mean, the people that are, you know, the companies that have started with the relocations again, you know, the same things happening is, you know, the visas are just taking a little bit longer to get. Yeah. So are you dealing with anything in the in the desert Palm Springs area? Uh, right now, you know, I haven't had many requests in Palm Springs, but, you know, it's, it's not something that you can't do because a lot of times that I'm able to do is, is work, you know, directly with with landlords as well as apartment communities and temporary housing companies. So, you know, I, I can do different things, but I, you know, and I haven't had anything in Palm Springs, but you know what? I'm happy to go out and check out Palm Springs. Always a nice place to spend the weekend. Yeah, this time of year, it's a little warm, but it's cooling off a little bit. But, um, uh, well, because there's uh, a lot of vacation rentals and, right. and the summer is pretty slow period usually in this. So there's housing. Right, there's housing there, but there's not many people going there. So right. that's, that, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's always the markets that are a little bit tougher that to get, um, you know, the the... the more impact metro areas that are harder to get the temporary house. You know, it's just, you know, I know New York, we tried to do the same thing in New York and we were having some challenges getting apartments there as well. So it's been a, it's been a give and take and just really working yeah. hard to get. So you mentioned quarantine for people coming in from outside the U S where would they quarantine? They need a place to live in order to quarantine. Right. So we're, they're either going into hotels for, for the few days of quarantine or they're going into their apartments to quarantine. And that's why we've got to get them there so that they can get quarantined for when school starts, because the, the universities aren't letting people just, you know, come in without, I mean, they have to show proof and, you know, companies and, and it's, you know, companies are doing the same thing as you can see all around, you know, you know, companies that are opening up and bringing people back in, you know, they're, they're setting up the quarantines, they're setting up the vaccinations. You've got to show proof, you know, you can't go anywhere right now without um, the proof of it. I mean, I'm working on a, on a, a charity event coming up and we've limited the numbers this year, but nobody can get in without proof of, you know, either a test or a vaccination card. You have to have, you know, proof of positive, um, not positive, negative test. Right. Test. So right. I think that this market has been really interesting on the way it's changed in our world. I mean, this, yeah. you know, you, I, I've seen so many different types of, um, yeah. there you go. I, you got your vaccine. Fine. Yeah, I got them. I've got my whole family sitting in my shelf for the case of emergency. Dad, you did take a picture of your back. Did you take a picture of your vaccination card? Yeah, and I've got the QR thing from the state. Oh, I I don't have that. How did you get that? You know, uh, offline, I'll, I'll, I'll get into <laughs> you it. You got to tell you. me how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, yeah cool. it's it's available. Uh, okay, because good. Because it, they have, it, it's actually very well organized. Um because you 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 got it through what Ventura County or something, right? And, and right. so they're they're all tied into the state, and so you have to fill out a form. It it doesn't take long at all. All right, you can tell me offline. We'll let you. We'll do that definitely and learn how to do that. But no, I mean, so the the you know the whole quarantine and everything going. I mean, it's it's what it is. I think it's just our way of life right now, and we're all moving forward. But I don't see people slowing down for stopping. You know, traveling. Um, you know, I was working again, it was about 30 people or so, and only one person backed out and said, Oh, you know what? I don't want to come over because of COVID. You know, everybody else is like, Yep, we're coming. We're not, you know, we're not going to let this stop us. So people are coming over. We've got that going. And it's just been great. I mean, you know, I've been talking to different companies because I'm, you know, I'm working towards, you know, helping again, consulting on some of their businesses, uh, helping them develop and grow their sales teams and their markets. Um, to, you know, penetrate different markets, you know, taking people from more regional to national levels as well. And, you know, they're seeing, you know, their clients are coming in and they need to get, um, 
you know, expand their temporary housing programs. So I'm working with that and it's been great. So, so I see the business, you know, coming back, people relocating again, you know, now that the borders are open up, we've got people going over to um, different markets. So it, it's real positive change for everybody. It's nice to see, you know, faces again. I'm just hoping that we don't get hit even harder than we've already been hit with the Delta variant. So we'll see about that. Yeah, or whatever is coming out of the... So anyway, that's mutating. We had a, a, a program recently with some doctors who are immunologists on this very topic of oh, wow. the, va- the vaccines and um, the virus and how it's impacting certain people, but not others uh, who are getting the vaccine. And so, and what's the variant and the variant is mutating, but they haven't named it yet. Uh, oh. and, and, and they're not sure to what impact. Oh, yeah. well, so, so it's a major, yeah. major, major problem. And that's, it, why mean, they're, that's why they're rushing with this number three. Which and, and I'm in line, gonna, I'm in line, I'm in line for any vaccine they're going to tell me I can take. <laughs> me too. Me too. I'm right in line. <laughs> Just give me, I'll give you my arm. Tell me wherever you need to poke me. Right. Um, I'm ready. So, I mean, it's, it's good. It's I'm ready, but like, hope, no, like it, I said, it's good. Hopefully we will still see people, you know, whether they're coming over borders and, you know, knock on wood, we, we don't, you know, our world doesn't close back down again. It's, you know, it's been nice to see people. It's been nice to talk. And, and I love seeing the industry, our industry coming back finally. So the, you know, the relocations and, and everything and people getting excited about it. Now we just need to get inventory, but, you know, like I said, there's a lot of resources out there that I've been working with. I'm, I'm blessed to have been in this industry for so many years that I know so many different people. Um, I think that gives me an advantage to be able to tap into all of the different people because you know, you can you can have a network and be able to just go to temporary housing companies and say, hey, um, you know, put out a request, send an email, give me a request. But there's something about knowing people in this industry and being sure. friends with them for so many years. And I, you know, I, I've been doing it forever. So I'm blessed. I've got some of the greatest friends that actually work at almost you know so many companies across the nation globally so it, it's a lot easier to just pick up the phone and say hey help me and uh, the response has been amazing it's been a re- really amazing and um, I'm happy that all of my partners out there have been able to help so good for you it's really a delight to have this conversation with you and understand your perspective and how you've reinvented uh, you know, your, yourself, uh, but your products and the mix and the applications, new applications of old stuff. And yeah, very you know helpful. What? You've got to be new. You've got to be, be creative. You know, it was funny because with the, I mean, you know, I've been doing the relocation. I'm still doing relocation, still helping. I'm still helping companies figure out their programs and their sales strategy. But then the whole student housing thing kind of fell on my lap, even though I have been doing it in my past careers. But then somebody called me and said, you know what? I've known you for years. How can you help me? And so they're like, we need your help. We're desperate. We, we, we don't know how to organize this. I'm like, oh, you know, no worries. I can do that. But I, I think it's all about knowing people and, you know, the trust out there to be able to, again, get your inventory, get your clients, you know, work for people. I, I, it's a love that I have. So, you know, I think if you'd love it, it just makes it a lot different. It's a great story, Tony and Dell. I thank you. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a timely announcement. Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career experts. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague, Julian Dalzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we'd value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10 minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com 
forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. What else would you like to talk about here while we have a few minutes? Well, you know, I, I would like to like share a little bit, you know, more of, you know, some of the things, you know, with, with everything that's going on in our world, let's just not say just with COVID, but with the different disasters that are going on and things, you know, the things like that. I, I really, you know, I was talking to when the, this whole Thomas fire, when I was involved in Thomas fire, and I've been involved in probably as many disasters as anybody, more disasters than people should be involved in, whether it is, you know, being locally to my house, I've been evacuated, you know, a couple of times in my own world, but as well as helping and going to disaster zones, I, I think for the, you know, for the relocation side of the business, I think that there's a lot of relocation managers and HR managers and, and corporations that really could benefit on not just having a, a relocation disaster plan for their company, like what's going to happen if they're in their building and they're going to, you know, there's a disaster, but how relocation and human resources can help support their employees when there is a disaster, because, you know, we're, we're global now. And so when I say there's a disaster, I'm talking about when people are losing their homes, when they're being evacuated, um, you know, helping them prepare uh, for a disaster, helping to be the sensitivity of after the disaster. You know what, these people, they can't, they can't come back. It takes days and months to figure out all the paperwork. And there, there's so many things that companies can do to help their employees. Um, but I think one of the things, one of the companies I'm working with, we are actually putting together a plan before a disaster hits. What do the what do the employees need to know? What should they have prepared? Where should their paperwork be? Where should they have medicines? What is their plan in case of a disaster? 
in case you're a disaster at home, what's your plan, a disaster, disaster at work. So you know, to make sure that you have everything you need and think about your home and strategy. You know, I don't know. Have you taken a video of your house, of, of all of your belongings? <laughs> no, right? So there's, there's, so these are the kind of things that I'm working with, actually one company with. And um, I just, just, you know, I look at all. Just do it right here on the phone. I, I'll yeah. tell you what, you yeah. videotape every. I mean, everything, and you know where all your paperwork is. You photocopy all of your important documents. You store them up into your phone, store them up in the cloud, wherever you want to store it. Yes, you can reach a lot of it. You can get it. You know, your insurance paperwork, you can get online, but there's, you know, you can't get copies of your passport. You, you, so you need to know where everything is. You, you, so I, I, I was mentioning in another conversation with somebody, I always joke around, you need to know where your shoes are so that if you got to run out of your house. You've got it. <laughs> But so that's one of the things I'm doing. I'm working on plans like that. And I just kind of, you know, plead to everybody out there, be prepared. I know that it seems like, oh, yes, I am. But like you said, if you don't know the content of your home, you, you need to know it. You need today, to know everything there. Every I, single solitary thing. And today out there, people, today is September 2, 2021. So you've been told by the professionals. <laughs> telling you, please get it done. So, so anyway, yeah. so that's something stuff that I think that, you know, that's something that I think is really important because as we watch, it's an only get you know what, our world is, there's only more and more things happening, unfortunately. And I just want to see everybody prepared. I don't want to see people ever have to go through what I've seen, family members and friends and, and strangers. I've had people cry in my arms. So that word people I knew, and I don't want to see that ever happen to anybody out here <laughs> listening to me right now. You want to, Email me, text me, call me. I'll, I'll be happy to tell you how I can help you with that also. Um, you know, anybody out there. My colleagues okay. out there, I'm happy. Okay, great. So uh, Tony Andell is on LinkedIn. Just uh, I am. Type in that name. Uh, is there a site, a website? No, not yet. I'm still working okay. on a website. Um, you know, just kind of working on a website. That'll be coming soon. I'll announce that and um, yeah, just getting started on really full force, getting everything working together. I've, I've been so busy. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had a chance to do the website yet. It takes and I'm talking to do. and I'm yeah. talking overseas at night. I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it at night. I'll do it at night. And then I'm like, oh no, I'm talking. Everybody's text. My phone blows up. My phone's blowing up at 10, 11, 12 at night. I finally have to turn it off sometimes. So I'm going to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So I invite you to come back on one of our group talk shows, uh, October 1, uh, okay. which is Friday morning at 9 a.m. California time. Uh, and we'll go for about 90 minutes max. There'll be people coming and going and talking about different things. So I'm just developing it now. And I'd like this topic to be a part of that. October sure, 1. Love, yeah, you know what? I would love to. You tell me, give me, give me what you want me to talk okay, about. I will. I will. And, and if you want to put together uh, or bring uh, one or two or three uh, people, they, it's all virtual. Uh, right. So they can just sit wherever they are and dial in. Um, but I would love to be able to talk with, with your help. Um, um, an administrator, school administrator that you work with or anybody else. Uh, but that's not necessary because you're good enough at that or a housing provider, friend, or contact that can also just give some testimony to what's going on on their end. Sure, yeah, let's let's talk about this and I will we'll put together some, together some information. Yeah, Absolutely. and so I'll be inviting some corporate people as well and, and some uh, relocation folks. So Tony Andel, thanks again for being on uh, the, the relocation TV package of I love it. global <laughs> tv yeah thank, thank you thank Have you and thank one. you thank you for taking it to a whole new dimension take oh, care I'm, I'm just <laughs> really happy we did this thanks ed thank you bye-bye now okay bye-bye thank you for joining us in the meeting room at global tv talk show have a wonderful day and stay safe <laughs>